Hi, welcome to the small shed. This week we're going to try and use some of that plywood that we got free the other week for men in sheds. See you in a minute. Now they say if life gives you lemons you make lemonade and in the case of men in sheds we were given an awful lot of plywood and it's time to try and find some things to do with it. Already made a start, one or two folks have starting to make things for themselves with it. I've used a bit here at home. Um, but I want to try and make something that they can make and sell at the craft fairs. Now generally our staple diet in the past has been pallet wood and things like that but they're always a bit sketchy in supply you never quite know what you're going to get you never know when you're going to get it so you're a little bit reactive we've done very well with one guy making um, bread boards and cheese boards because we had some oak worktop left to us that was an off cut and that's very good but you can't just guarantee you you're going to get it and it's probably not cost effective to start going out and buying it just to make stuff although that's something we could investigate I suppose in the future but we've got all this plywood and I thought it would be worth seeing if any of our existing projects would translate over to being used with plywood bird boxes and things I'm not too sure about because of the risk you get with this cheaper plywood delaminating and that so I'm not quite sure whether that's going to work or not but a lot of the guys have been messing around with little barbecue tote type things uh, little carry little carry box effectively a general purpose thing that probably will sell for a few pounds but it's the sort of thing people pick up and think oh that would be useful to put under the sink or in the garage or in the shed carry stuff around in so that's the aim of today i want to start and see if i can make one see how it comes out see if i'm happy with it when it's done and then perhaps take it on stage after that if it's successful and we'll look at getting into production later on because we've now got a stable source that you can turn around and say well we'll make a whole load of these things so let's go and pop down to the shed first the big shed because it needs some of the plywood cutting up into strips and I'll take it on from there. Now it was just pure laziness really getting it done down at the Menin Shed's shed but I was all set up down there with the little workbench that I built and I'd got the um, Festool TS55 plunge saw set up as well down there so there's a lot more room to work in than in the shed so it did seem a bit silly to bring it all home and do it in the shed that I haven't got a lot of room in when I could do it down there and essentially it was just a matter of cutting up strips of ply to the sort of sizes that I thought I would need and chopping off with the table saw which again to get that out in the shed is a bit of a faff Similarly, you move on to the um, pillar drill. The one at the shed has got a bit more oomph. I could have done it again at home, but all of these things are just permanently laid out there and I can move from one to the other. And as I'm now down there a couple of days a week at the moment, um, it's just as easy to do it down there as spend half a day getting the shed cleared out here and then uh, stand around down at men in sheds not doing anything chopped out the handle um, holes just needed joining up then um, to get the handhold effectively uh, and done that on the little scroll saw they've got down there and again there's a scroll saw under the bench in the shed here but I've got to get it out and I've got to find the blades and all the usual excuses but if you've got the facility that we've got down there might as well take advantage of it and I can just move from one tool to another cut that out with the bandsaw on the outside and we've got the full kit of parts right so that's now given me the bits that I want I've got 
more wants to clean up but I've got a central handle part I've got a cross divider to go there one to go there pair of sides and a pair of ends and that should all glue up neatly into a, a nice little caddy what I'm going to do now is just round over all of the top the, the slot where your hand goes in all of the top parts there and just the outside edges of those parts so that that makes it a bit more um, pleasant to, to handle And there we are ready for glue all nicely rounded over just got to decide whether to give it a coat of oil a coat of stain a coat of clear varnish I'm not quite sure which as long as I use wood glue and don't get too much everywhere it leaves me options reasonably open this was more than anything meant to be a test to see if we could make something that was useful using the plywood that we've got I think the next stage is to move on a bit and think about how we can put it into production as an item rather than just making a one-off but I'm just going to glue this one together in the now see if there are any issues with doing it and then we can move on from there So there we have it, we've made what is effectively what I wanted to, a little carry tote. It's far more substantial than I thought it would be, it's really quite solid, quite heavy. I've given it a coat of clear, the quick five minute uh, satin seal at the moment, it probably could do with a little rub just to denib it but I'm happy with that it's not perfect there's one or two little areas of not quite rightness about it but it certainly uh, exceeded what I thought we'd be able to do and what I'm going to do now is give some thought as I say to making it in a, a more user-friendly manner if you like as it is this will just get a light denib down and I'll just stick it on the bench with all the other things at the next craft source craft sale. It's easy for me to say. And see if we can get, you know, a few pounds for it. Hope the video is of interest. Look forward to seeing you next week. We'll be doing something different. Hope to see you then. Bye!